All right, everybody, it is time to turn our attention to the Mexico Open. It is where the uh, PGA Tour is taking its talents this week, and mm -hmm. we have two dudes here to uh, help us out. DraftKings contributor uh, Jeff Warwick, Colin Sherwin, uh, in the house here as well. Uh, good morning to both of you. Uh, before... Before we, uh, we look ahead, though, let's go ahead and let's break down yesterday what happened in uh, New Orleans. So Patrick Cantlay and Xander Shoffley at the Zurich Classic uh, team event. They knocked off Billy Ho and it was Sam Burns by two strokes for a wire-to-wire -wire win. Really good stuff by Shoffley. We know he won, like, the gold medal mm -hmm. uh, at the Olympics, but I believe his first win on tour since the 2019 Century Tournament of Champions. Yeah. I mean, Jeff, when we talk golf like this and when you're back in the winner's circle – with this sport, individual sport like this, what does this do to the confidence of a guy like Xander Shoffley who's been on this dry spell? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people could write it off. Well, it's the team event. It's not that big a deal. And it's obviously a little bit of a lower tier event. But, I, I mean, you, you also have to go out there. You Remember, these guys won an alternate shot. I mean, alternate shot, there's no parachute. There's no second ball you're playing. You've got to concentrate over every shot. And if anything, it makes it tougher. So, I think it's actually big that these two guys came in and blew the doors off of a weaker field event like they should have. I mean, they were the second favorites here. And when you perform up to that level and you're a top player, I think it does boost the confidence. We've seen winners here like John Rom, Cam Smith. They've taken like wins in fields like this and they've gone on to bigger and better things. You know, in Rom's case, a major. I think Shoffley and Cantley are, are absolutely two players who you'll see break through soon. And I think a win like this only, you know, suggests that that breakthrough is, is coming maybe sooner than people think. Hey, Colin, do you think that this could help catapult one of them sooner rather than later back into the winner's circle? So uh, considering Cantley the week before at Harbortown was in the playoff yep. to try and win, I think that was, you know, this could really show that we could see some maybe not like Scheffler type momentum out of Cantley, but maybe some like real momentum going forward. Um, it was the fifth career win for Shoffley. Um, but again, they did it all on Thursday and Saturday, which were the best ball formats. They shot 59 on Thursday. They shot 60 on Saturday. Um, so I, I think if anything, it might lead for a little more momentum for Cantlay, who has now been in a playoff and won, um, than it might even for, for Shoffley going forward. So, um, yeah, I think it matters, but I think it may matter even more to his partner. Okay, on to the Mexico Open this week. Uh, John Rahm going to be the highest ranked golfer to tee it up. He's currently number three in the world, naturally a heavy favorite on the DK Sportsbook this week. So any reason to bet Rahm at plus 400, Colin, or is it just too low to even consider? Absolutely not. This is just, I mean, look, John Rahm's definitely the best player in this field. This is a very light field this week. But um, I would say absolutely, you're never taking a golfer at four to one. All you need is one blow up hole, one rules infraction, one anything that can keep you out of it. Um, so, yeah, this is just way too well a price to ever take these. And the rest of the guys in the field, they're pretty good, too. So this is not Tiger Woods. This is not 1998. Uh, I'm saying punt on Rom and just go further down the board and try and find some value. Jeff, not for you. <laughs> I was about to say, this is Tiger Woods in his prime number we're getting today. Plus 400 is, is absurd. I mean, this is this is a this is a par 73 course. I mean, there's like seven, there's six par fives on it. Someone's just going to get hot with their putter here. And I mean, it could be John Rahm. We've seen him come in and do that. He's won over in Europe in a couple of these weaker field events where the scoring gets low. But like John Rahm was T27 at the Masters. I mean, it's not like he's coming in on fire or something. This isn't Scotty Scheffler right now. This is a guy who's just started a little bit slow and the putter and short game have kind of, eluded him in terms of sharpness so far. There's no way you're betting John Rahm a plus 400. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It really, at, at any point, at any field in a PGA event, you shouldn't be betting any player at this number. But he's also won on some Greg Norman design courses over on the uh, European Tour before. As you have mentioned, the European Tour wins, Jeff. Hey, Ulrich, what about other guys at the top of the odds board you like? Yeah, I mean, look, Daniel Berger, a plus 900. Again, I, I just don't think you need to go down that low. I think when you start to look down the field, uh, you see some more interesting names. Um, I think a lot of people key on Abraham Answer, obviously, um, you know, has come close to, to winning another event, uh, the Mayakoba Classic in his homeland. I think he can keep going further down. I think Aaron Wise, a plus 4,000, who showed up at the RBC uh, at Heritage, the Hilton Head, had really good irons for three out of four rounds, was in contention. His other win has come on a big, expansive course as well, which we're going to get here. He can dominate par fives. He won't have to worry necessarily about being you know, straight off the tee here because there's a ton of room, apparently. I think Aaron Wise, a plus 4,000, 
is where I would start. You know, you could certainly maybe dip your toes into like the Tony Finau waters or something like that or Chris Kirk. But I think Aaron Wise stands out as the best value, plus 4,000 in that range. All right. Who stands out to you here, Colin? You're on mute, brother. It's okay. Oh, my God. He's panicking. Problem <laughs> solved. He's back. Oh, he's back. Kick saving a beauty. Yeah. Um, uh, so, sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with my sucker play here again, which is Kevin Na, who just seems to be playing and just has that one or two holes every event that he just can't quite cut through. Um, he did win his group at the match play, T14 at the Masters, T26 at the RBT Heritage, which is great. As, but this is a light field this week. I mean, there's not there's John Rahm against the field. This is not a, an event where you could really see somebody just sort of like um, – you know, running away with it. So I think it's very possible. And of course, you know, Tony Finau will probably be in the lead on Saturday and then give it away on Sunday. So keep that in mind as well. The third round leader, Tony Finau. I really like that. You can find that bet somewhere. Okay. Uh, Mexico native Abraham answer could be extra motivated this week, but he hasn't been in great form. So not a single top 30 thus far in 2022. Like uh, what do we think, Colin? Would you consider him at plus 2,500? Uh, probably not. Look, form just matters too much in golf. You know, I, I know he's playing in his homeland and then there's probably a comfort factor, but if anything, that might even be a little bit more pressure. Um, so I sort of tend to lean on these things as, as sort of like the Vince McMahon, um, the hometown curse, if it will. Sometimes people don't play nearly as well in their home place because they're, they're feeling the pressure. They've got family and friends. They're trying to get tickets for people. It just seems like it's a lot of input to have to deal with. There's also a new course. Um, and I simply don't know how familiar he is with it. Um, this will be the new, this will be the course for Mexico open for the next three years. Um, but again, this just seems like a guy who's not in form right now. And if anything, going home might not be the best thing for him. So I'm still a stay away. All right, Jeff, what do we think? No, and, and I mean, it, it's honestly, it's kind of an easy segue because Colin already brought up Kevin Na, who I'd much rather play if you're going to go to that number. I mean, I know Na is plus 22 and, and Answer is plus 2,500, but it's really close. Answer, obviously, I'm, we're not really even sure if he's dealing with like an injury or what. He pulled out of the Valero. Uh, he's, he's, he pulled out of the event after the, the Masters as well, where he missed the cut uh, as well. So it's not like Answer has been sharp at all. And yeah, the, the pressure thing, I, I think, I think answer is more than capable of dealing with it. He's shown that he can get in competition or in, in compete and, and get in the mix uh, at other events that have been played in Mexico. But I just don't think that the form is there at all. And when you add in a little bit extra pressure, um, I, I'm not really bullish on him at all this week. So I'd much rather go, go up to a guy like Kevin Howard, even like Gary Woodland, who again, before that miscut at the masters was actually showing pretty good form. I just think there's better choices than answer at that number this week. Or who's your early pick to win the event this week? Well, I mean, I mentioned Aaron Wise, and I really yeah. do like him. But, you know, just to add on to the Aaron Wise thing, because I've already mentioned, how about C.T. Pan at plus 6,000? He's Ooh. gained strokes on approach in six straight events. He's got a lot of – he's got some experience playing on pass Palom greens, which they're, which they're going to see this week. He can get red hot with that putter. If it shows up and the irons stay hot, I think C.T. Pan is actually very live at plus 6,000 as well. Who are you feeling right now, Colin? Uh, I Again, I, I love Finau uh, to bet early and then fade him on Sunday. Um, just get your hedge in early, but, uh, you know, this just seems like the kind of event and a guy who plays well overseas is Patrick Reed. Um, not exactly the most popular guy on tour, but for some reason does seem to do well when he's abroad. I don't know if we count Mexico as abroad or not. Um, but if we do, um, it seems like he might be a guy who could just, he, he's not been in great form, but if anybody could like pull it together and, uh, and have a big week in Mexico this week, I think it's him. So I'm going to go with P Reed as, and, uh, and Fino as my futures, but also, but Kevin Na is going to be where I lay most of the wood. 